and sponsors.
Homeland Security check. Welcome back to Barahdan. I hope you enjoyed that piece. Uh, I heart Hamas, and this is produced and performed by Jennifer Jaja. She is a writer, performer, and she came back all the way from San Francisco. And I don't know why anybody come to Minnesota <laughs> at this time of the year, but I think she's great to have her here. She's performing here in the Twin Cities. Well, ab about uh, uh, performance about uh, what it's like to be a uh, Palestinian American living a post 9/11 craze. And welcome to Bilahdan. Uh, Thank you uh, for Jennifer. having me. Very <laughs> nice to have you. I've been following you around <laughs> on the internet. You've ah. been all over the places. And I, I, I think what, what, what is so nice about uh, this show, I Heart Hamas, uh, and uh, it's about time, uh, not just the Americans look at this uh, terrorism, homeland security, and all that crap after 9 11 becomes, you know, a comical material because they grow over it. Also, the Arab American needs to get over this, and and, and in a way, you try to uh, uh, are you trying to to take this sensitive issue uh, that's uh, issue it's really affecting Arab American on a daily basis at the airport, to work, whatever, and make it like a mainstream, um, you know, as you can s you say, tragic comic or whatever you're trying to. So tell us a little bit why what that show and what are you trying to to uh, to. to Tell us about it. Well, I created the show. Uh, I grew up uh, Arab in America, San Francisco, uh, in a Palestinian community. And I created the show because I wanted people to know what it felt like to be Palestinian. I think people don't understand when you have such a politicized identity that every day, um, you know, anytime I tell someone I'm Palestinian, they want to talk about the conflict. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. What do you think of Hamas? What do you think of terrorism? Yeah. What do you think of this? And sometimes I just want to, you know, go to the cafe or go to yeah. a restaurant or go to work. And I don't want to talk about this. Um, so I think I wanted to create a piece that explained to people what it felt like to be politicized every minute of your life and how sometimes that's really, there were really funny moments about that. There were really ridiculous situations you get into um, that people have uh, these preconceived notions. Mm -hmm. um, and you're thinking, man, I just want to get the job. I don't want to talk, <laughs> you know? Well, it's interesting <laughs> because uh, I mean, the average American spends 15 minutes on politics a month. So mm -hmm. not really. Mm -hmm. Their mm -hmm. life mm -hmm. is not mm -hmm. poor. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, most people wouldn't know the difference between Hamas, Hezbollah, whatever the case may be. But when it comes to the Middle an Arab or a Palestinian, all of a the sudden they became political. They, d they cannot go over the fact you could be an accountant or uh, a friend or a neighbor. Right. You can talk about other issues. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I've spent my life trying to say, oh, no, 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 but I'm I'm just a person. I'm yeah. an actress. I'm a, yeah. I'm a human being. I'm a woman. I, you know, these are my beliefs about this. This I like to, um, you know, this is what I like to eat. This is what I like to do. And so finally I got so frustrated. I, I was like, I'm going to say it once in a show. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. And then people can understand. And I think, you know, I really wanted to create the show to give people a, a, a glimpse into, very personal glimpse into just one Palestinian woman's life. And, you know, I have the same desires as most people. I have the same, you know, you, it follows me living, uh, growing up in San Francisco and then moving to Ramallah. And, um, you moved to Ramallah, you said a little bit, and, and tell us a little bit about that. Uh, when was that uh, took place, and uh, why is that? Well, I moved to Ramallah in, two, in the summer of 2000. Uh -huh. um, when you say you moved, not a visit. Well, I, technically, I went initially as a visit. Uh -huh. um, I was working as an actress in New York, and I was frustrated with the way my career was going. And um, 
I was spending a lot of time working in restaurants and not on the stage. Acting and there, so like a bigger acting, tent. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> acting like I cared about what you wanted to order. <laughs> and <laughs> That's an Egyptian waiter. Uh, he, he looks so handsome. And I was in Egypt in a cafe, and I said, you should be acting. And uh, you, know, you look like uh, you know, Omar Sharif. I said, what do you think I'm doing? <laughs> what, what do you think I'm doing? I'm acting like I care what you want to eat. Yeah, <laughs> OK. And so. Um, yeah, and I, so I at, this point, at this point, I just wanted to take a break. T I really wanted to take a break. I felt like I was um, going on these auditions, and there were no roles for Arabs, so I had to be something else. But then, well, some roles. but then I wasn't. I was well at the time in two thousand, not oh, so I much. Oh, I see. And. Um, so okay, maybe we can cast you as Mexican, but you're not really, you don't act Mexican, you know, what, a, what, is, what does that mean? And so it's like, I really couldn't fit into these other, well, you're kind of Indian, but yeah. you, you don't really, you know, do you speak some Hindi? No. Um, it's amazing that actually they have a conversation yeah, about no, no, this. Yeah, no, they do actually, it's in the show, you'll see. Yeah. <laughs> but um, the, so, at that time, I was just very frustrated, and I think looking for something deeper. And I thought, you know what? Let me go figure out where I'm from. Let me go to Ramallah, where my parents are from, and see what it's like just for the summer. And so I went there to study Arabic. I didn't learn any Arabic, <laughs> and I spent the time going to cafes. I spent the time going to cafes and and staying with people and meeting people and uh, hanging out with young That's people. That's your first time. First time to visit, Palestine? to visit, and it was amazing, and I didn't want to leave. Wow. So I decided to stay. I was going to stay and get a job, and of course the intifada started, <laughs> and my parents called me and said, get your, <laughs> you know, get home. And I said, no, 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 I mean, people can live yeah. here. People live here. Yeah. I mean, it's not, you know, and... Um, and so I stayed, and it and it just kept getting worse and worse and worse. And you know, they kept calling, saying, "Get home! It's too crazy!" Yeah. You know, and and I felt like um, I didn't want to leave because a I was really finding a connection with where I came from. And so what were you doing beside? I was working for a theater company um, that did uh, theater for social development, so I they see. were doing really great work. And I was also spending time um, filming stuff mm -hmm. going on there, and uh, you know, just. What do you do in a way stereotyping also by being an American there? Because sometimes y y you are here, you're not really fully American. Oh where yeah. You're from you go over there, you're not fully Egyptian or fully Palestinian. Yeah. So how how that how did you fit in there? Well, because I could be American, I could get away with a lot more. Yes. So that was good. <laughs> really. um, I could get through checkpoints when other people couldn't. I could talk to soldiers and say, yeah. "Hey, listen, man, I'm," yeah. you know, and and so yes, there was I, there I was I a level of power mm -hmm. that I had that other people didn't have, which made me feel like I really needed to stay because yeah. I had access to things. Yeah. Um, and to communicating about things or shooting video when I was there that other people didn't have access to. But I also felt like the Palestinian Palestinian community there really welcomed me. They were so excited that I would want to come back. Like, are you crazy? Why? <laughs> You're so connected yeah. to your community, you yeah. want to come back? So they were very welcoming. But, you know, they, it was also culturally, I grew up Amer American, mm -hmm. and so, They'd be like, ah, because you're Ashnabi, and I'm Ashnabi. <laughs> yeah, I'm from yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, French. This is a, yeah, and and that's probably as an artist, and how how you react to this kind of uh, out of place, no matter where you go. Mm -hmm. And you, uh, in, in your play, you try to recreate a new reality or new environment that you can fit in. Yeah, I mean, I do feel like that's the, the, the show. The show is about me just claiming a space where all of the different things that don't make sense, mm. the parts of being Palestinian here that don't fit in, the parts of being American there that don't fit in, all fit in in the show because it's just my story. Uh -huh. And uh, and I get to tell only the parts I want to tell. <laughs> so it's fit in your skin. <laughs> it's, it's, it's perfect <laughs> representation. Yeah, makes but sense. Uh, I think the show has been really powerful as well for people because um, I think they're not used to hearing such a personal, such an honest, per, you know, point Brutally of view. Brutally honest, they say. Brutally honest point of view about how it feels to try to fit in both places, but also how do you react when 
when people have all these expectations of you, I have all these negative expectations oh, of where you're from and what you're supposed to do. How do you fit in, and what? How do you negotiate your identity? And I think once I re once I got to Palestine, um, I felt like, oh, I'm home. You know, cool. I felt I was at home. But the situation got violent and more violent and more violent, and I wasn't equipped emotionally mm -hmm. to deal with it because I really, you know, the people who grew up in that kind of situation, they've created mechanisms, you deal know, to it. deal with it. Yeah. And I didn't have that. So a part of the show really talks about the breakdown of my, my emotional state because I felt like I'm home, but... I was so sensitive to all of the violence and it really affected me and I got very angry and um, so like angry at the violence whom you angry at yourself or the, the, um, the, the fact you are there or? a couple different things I was very angry at the Israelis of course yeah. um, and at the occupation and so angry that my friends were so talented and so ambitious and wanted to just you know live their lives and and hang out and be young and go to a party and mm -hmm. experience all the things that young people want to experience human. and they had no access to this mm -hmm. uh, they didn't have hobbies they didn't have books they didn't have uh, there's no clubs there's nowhere to learn something if you want to learn a skill you can't, there's no karate class. There's no. You don't learn another language. I mean, they have these you minor things. Rocks. You can throw rocks, but <laughs> these the board, these yeah. minor things that we don't take dance classes. There, we don't learn about this because there's no place to do it. And no. those are the daily things that made me really angry that they didn't have access. You are reduced to just that uh, kind of. Uh, yeah. Of an, uh, th th so you decided to come. To come back. Back. Yes. How was the re-entry to the United States? Uh, how long did you stay there? I stayed until September 1st, 2001. So about uh, a year and a half? To yeah, a year and okay. a half. So how was the re-entry? Very difficult. Very yeah. Sometimes difficult. Sometimes harder than the, even the first. Yeah. Uh, um, it was very hard to come back, and then September 11th happened 10 days later, so it was like... Okay, really? <laughs> What's happening? And like the father there. I mean, I was looking at the I know, seriously. I came back to New York and I said, you know, the first thing I said to my friend when I, or when I arrived is, I can't, I'm so. I have, I'm exhausted. so happy to be in a place that there's no war. Oh, I see when you came. When I came back to America and. But I said, but everybody seems naked. <laughs> it's summer in New York. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, I, you know, I was so craving being in a place where it was just, you could just do, you could just be normal. Yeah. You could just go have a coffee with your friend and not be like, oh my God, there might be bombing. Yeah. They might have the checkpoints closed or, you take you know, this for granted. These are things you take for so much for granted. I want to take a yoga class. My God, it's like impossible <laughs> to do something. And that's what's missing in, uh, in, in Palestine on this area or uh, even in Egypt with those places of trouble the, the, the sense of normalcy mm -hmm. it's just not there it's not there and it, it's really it's uh, it, 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 it kind of deprived you of being a normal human yeah I, and I think that's the thing that made me the most uh, just f I felt so frustrated that the people there were not having any experience to expand themselves to to develop as human beings because their lives were so limited that not not no, I mean they don't even have access to food they don't have access to education to medical uh, let alone a yoga class I mean this yoga. is like, a, <laughs> like a <laughs> impossible oh no. but you this know uh, so I felt like I really wanted to stay like it was my duty to stay almost yeah. I ha but at the same time I, I, the violence was so upsetting to me that I felt like I, I had had enough I had an, an artist cannot function in, in, in a violent environment then yeah I think we're too sensitive yeah it doesn't it doesn't work very well a and the thing that really shocked me is the more violent it got, the more angry I got, and the more I felt like it's vi it's totally justified to to be violent mm -hmm. in return. No. Retaliation. It seemed to me, you know, 
Well, the violence will take different definitions. It takes just, it know, takes survival. It, it survival and it, and it takes over your sense of you know, you're when you're put in this extreme situation when you have no option, sucked into the cycle and yeah. it's and it's and so it seemed to me I understood how people get so extreme. I understood how people become radical, be, what's called radical, yeah. but to me it's a normal human reaction. Yeah. Um, and so I wanted in the show to convey like a very funny parts of being Palestinian, you know, people, um, you know, people having all these crazy ideas of like, well, what does that mean? And what do you think about this? And how do you feel about Jews? <laughs> and, you know, cra where people just ask you these really inappropriate yeah, yeah. questions on the street. <laughs> but also, um, but also the sense of like, I wanted to convey how easy it is to get caught up in these feelings when you're in this situation and that maybe people's ideas of what's radical or, or calling people terrorists or is, you know, not that I'm justifying it, but I, I wanted to, Understand. I wanted to show people that it's it's very human it's a very human reaction Element in it. and that maybe the the part that needs to be examined isn't the reaction but how people get broken down to this point how do mm -hmm. people get sucked into this and also you're an American you were born here mm -hmm. as American mm -hmm. so in a way was was an educational experience for you as an American yes to go on go so you can relate that to an American audience yeah how you can you know uh, learn and be aware of these things and, uh, and understand it yeah definitely I think for the show people say to me like from all places from uh, Filipinos, Mexicans, uh, people from South America, you, you know, they said to me, oh, even uh, I met this guy who's an Iraqi Jew, and he said, you can't imagine what the kind of questions people have. Like, people don't understand where I'm from or what my identity is. So it was so great to see a show about somebody struggling with their identity because I can totally relate. And I think uh, that's the part I wasn't an anticipating about the show. Beyond the situation in Palestine, people... Uh, you know, America's made up of people from all over the place who don't, who come with all this baggage, who come mm. with wars and history, and and so I think uh, people said to me like, oh, they think you know, they have all these ideas of what Mexican people are and all these stereotypes. So and uh, you know, it's such an individualistic uh, culture here and access to all kind of informations, but it's still uh, the, the majority of people here will just have one idea they ask the same questions right 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 you ask the same question to a Palestinian to any as if Palestinian <laughs> just one thing <laughs> it's funny I created a segment in the show called ask a Palestinian <laughs> <laughs> yeah you should have a day of that where I what answer would, uh, Jesus do what would <laughs> Jesus do? ask a Palestinian so it's uh I answer stereotypical questions from the audience uh about what do they actually you interact with no them? no no oh I see they don't really get to ask them yeah, I yeah. just answer the questions uh, I've you've been <laughs> asked already <laughs> that I was gonna you know do you how how are you Christian did you convert yeah. It's the yeah. Holy Land. <laughs> Where it's do you think the Christians are? <laughs> <Well, laughs> that's yeah. also an interesting because when, when people think of Hamas, people of Palestine, people of Arab, they think of right. mo Islam and this Muslim terrorists, I mean, extremists. And exactly. So, uh, how being raised as Christian, w w you know, a lot of people don't understand uh, a Christian Arab or Christian Palestinians' identity, also, it's a different layer of. Uh, yeah. It's funny, I have this line in the show. Um, uh, when it's I do these stereotypical questions and it's like you know it's the holy land like Jesus was born in Palestine <laughs> why wouldn't there be Christians yeah. there well you it know? didn't look like it's a, uh, a Swedish <laughs> tennis player no 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 <laughs> so uh, you know and and questions about do you what do you eat what do you wear what do you uh, do you date and you know things like well, this well, what's the right that kind of line of questioning you know why it's so important to know what the Palestinian eat or date and, 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 and what well I thought it's important to answer those questions in the show because it, a they're very funny but B it's uh, you know it's all of the things are, are things that it's just like I eat what no, no, you know mm -hmm. I eat what normal we eat bacon mm -hmm. <laughs> it's actually Muslims and Jews yeah. who shouldn't be eating bacon <laughs> not a I'm at the airplane, airline, I eat bacon, I don't reject anything. 
It's impossible. Do you know how hard it is to find bacon in Jerusalem? Really? I had a whole scene in the show about that, <laughs> but I cut it out. What is it gone or the, after the swine flu? But you, you, <laughs> you know, the, the, the thing is, uh, you know, there was, uh, I had the, the FBI director on the show here. The uh, what? The FBI. Oh my right? gosh, okay. And, and then we're talking about, you know, <laughs> what you guys, what are you looking for? You know, you mm -hmm. can look and, and, and I know people will laugh about this. I just came from the airport and uh, I landed and the, uh, the U.S. Department, whatever, land security guy or whatever, uh -huh. uh, uh, found this in my luggage. What's and he was staring at it yeah. as if it was like Al-Qaeda's uh, manual yeah, of course. because it has an Arabic on it. Right. But the thing is that uh, that intimidation of, uh, I think uh, it's, it's in a way of a mindset. Mm -hmm. I, mean, uh, I mean, if this people spend billions of dollars uh, to secure us uh, flying, and this is uh, how they, the way they are thinking, I don't think technology will help them that much. Well, yeah. I mean, it's interesting that um, don't fly with Arabic. That is number one. <laughs> don't that's fly. That's don't fly with an Arabic T-shirt. That's uh, the top one. Tips. Um, yeah, I don't know about the the airport security situation. I think that's um, that's a whole other show. But I think that people have these ideas about who Arabs are, who Palestinians are especially Palestinian is, is, is what make is interesting for me, that is just so far from reality. Um, that I wanted I wanted to create something that was gonna blow everybody's expectations. So you're talking about shocking the audience? Um Shocking them by it being so normal, you know. Well, shocking them by it being so like, ah, she just wants to go on a date. She well, just that, <laughs> being a normal Palestinian, that is shocking. She just wants to go on a date. <laughs> she doesn't want to talk about politics. Yeah, you know those kinds of things that um, that I think is the way that it's going to start. Things are going to start changing, and people are going to start understanding each other. Beside the homeland security people, who else comes to your show? Uh, I think definitely some radical Zionists come to the show, mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I... Um, Are they vocal? They no, no, no. Okay. I'm, I actually, knock on wood, I um, and I'm going to just because I'm superstitious. <laughs> mm -hmm. I haven't had any any sort of negative reactions to the show, except for a couple crazy emails. Um but the people who come to the show are, have been very open-minded. I've had a lot of... It's funny because people expect that a lot of Arabs are coming to the show and they're not, which is interesting. Mm. I have anywhere... I would say on a good night, a, a quarter of my audience is, is Arab descent. Yeah. Um, I've heard it enough. Uh, the question's been asked. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Most of the show, though... Um, well, 30 seconds here to close, it's just... Uh, Most of the show has been like a, a lot of theater audiences, people interested in politics, or people who just are interested in the issue and want to hear what this crazy show is going to be about. I, I think it's a wonderful thing. Thanks for bringing Thank this to the ministry. Much. Good luck. She's in Twin Cities. <laughs> and, and I will see you next week. Assalamu alaikum and God bless you all.